So last night, Venerable reminded us that uh, we talk a lot about compassion here at the Abbey. Every day, we talk about compassion. And then, what is it that we do in our regular life? Um, I found this to be a very provocative question, and it's timely. Um, because recently, someone pointed out to me that I tend to run over people. And um, when I heard this, I was first taken aback. You know, I'm aware of it, of course. Um, but I was taken a little bit aback because it's something that I don't feel that good about doing, and it's a very strong habit. So it reminded me of this um, adage I'd heard that when we first meet the Dharma, we're pretty much unaware of a lot of our habits. And then there's this period where we're, our, we're aware of our habits and we do them anyway. And that's a very, 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 very long time. <laughs> And then finally, we overcome the habits. So I'm in this very, 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 very long period of uh, being aware of certain habits, like running over people, and, um, and aspiring to do something different. Um, so uh, this example came to mind. And I suspect we all know personally what it feels like to be run over. Anybody not had that experience in this life? <laughs> So we all know what that feels like. It doesn't feel very good. You know, we, we have needs to be respected and valued and considered in other people's um, actions. Um, and often it brings a lot of resistance in the other person, doesn't it, when we're powering over. But um, I suspect that we all also know what it feels like to power over others. Uh, when, when I first got this feedback, I felt um, a lot of emotions, like, you know, there's self-consciousness and a little bit of shame, maybe, embarrassment, um, yeah, because it's something that I'm really working on, trying to overcome, catch it sooner, put it down faster. But then I remembered that, well, it, this is an affliction, and we all have all the afflictions, just at different degrees. So probably we all have some aspect of powering over others. For example, um, I kind of noticed this in the mornings, people who are waiting for their toast. Have you noticed there's a little bit of <laughs> puffing up? Get out of my space. <laughs> That's my toast. My toast is ready. Move your peanut butter <laughs> out of the way. So, you know, little things like that. It can come up in little ways. It can also come up in very large ways, can't it? Um, so, like all afflictions, we've probably all done this at one time or another. And it reminded me of uh, uh, some talks that Lachelle gave when she was here um, helping us to learn NBC. And so there are some very tell telltale signs of powering over others that I have found helpful as a list to just go to periodically and check to see how I'm doing. So I thought just to share those. And then we can also look at you know how that compares with power with people. So when we're powering over others, we're believing our needs are more important than others. Well, that's self-centeredness, isn't it? I mean, it could be many afflictions involved, but primarily it's just thinking that our needs are more important than someone else's, or that we deserve to have our needs met before somebody else. Um, another telltale sign is announcing what's going to happen rather than negotiating. Negotiating takes time. It's so inconvenient. <laughs> just do it my way, <laughs> and it'll, it'll get done. Um, becoming angry or resentful if someone doesn't follow our advice or meet our expectations. Probably that doesn't relate to anybody here. <laughs> um, giving less consideration to those we perceive as lower than us in a hierarchy. Again, just a small example, but I think about my own experience of going through the food line. When someone's in front of me, I'm thinking, hurry up already, you know. <laughs> but when it's my turn, I'm thinking, would you just be patient? You know, so we have these contradictions uh, that pop up, or at least I do. Okay, so giving unsolicited advice about things that are not in our area of authority. Ooh, that one busts me. How about you? <laughs> I have an opinion, like Venerable Tarpa was reminding us the other day. I have opinions about many things. And they're good, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, people should listen. Um, imagining we know what's right for another person without asking them, that can get us into trouble. Uh, when we blame, shame, or criticize, that can be uh, a, a clue that we're powering over others. Or when we want to punish others, none of us would want to punish anyone. We're, we're good Buddhists, aren't we? But we all know how to give people the look. 
Yeah? You've just displeased me. <laughs> so those are some telltale signs that we can watch out for when there could be perhaps a tendency that we're powering over somebody. Um, in a power with consciousness, it's very different. And a lot of these sound a lot like what we learn when we're developing bodhicitta. So we remember that the needs of all living beings are equally important. You know, equalizing self and others will take care of a lot of this, won't it? Um, it sounds so nice and it feels so nice when we can do that, really consider other people and their needs. Um, we've probably all had experiences of that too, I'm sure. We try to maintain awareness and responsibility for our own needs and values while being able to consider and hear others' needs. And we consider the needs of others equally without regard for rank or age or differences. Well, that one's a little hard. <laughs> I find I want people to hold the door open, open for me because my whole life I've been younger holding the door for older people, and now I'm old, and so I want people to do that for me. <laughs> You already have acknowledged that I'm old. <laughs> older. Old is relative, isn't it? Yeah, okay. Older. We can offer empathy just as easily to someone above us in hierarchy as we can to someone below. So that's a sign of having this valid sense of self that can uh, share power with others rather than feeling insecure and feeling like we need to have a one-up on somebody. So when we make decisions that affect others, we try to collaborate and uh, in the decision-making process. We encounter conflict. Oh, if we encounter a conflict, we can engage in negotiation with respect for differing perspectives instead of resorting to criticism, convincing, manipulating, or shutting down. That's what I was doing the other day. I was speaking very persuasively, <laughs> but probably it was just trying to convince somebody to do it my way. Um, and then recognizing the limits of our own personal or, or cultural perspectives so that we can become more curious about what's going on for the other and include differences. So those are some things that um, can be helpful to keep in mind when we're trying to be inclusive and uh, change this self-centered habit of me first, my agenda, I've got to get my work done, I need your help, too bad that you need mine. Um, so I've found that uh, often, well, I have a strong habit of this, and um, I came by it honestly, but I probably came in with this very strong habit of, you know, having done that in previous lives, so I've, I'm certainly still working with it now. Um, but I also find that when I'm moving too fast, that's when I'm more likely to power over others. So one of the strategies that I'm working with is just reminding myself to slow down. Be patient. Often it comes from impatience, too. I just want someone to get out of my way. Um, so slowing down, being patient, can be, I have found to be quite helpful. Um, so I, as I said, I think all the meditations that we find in cultivating bodhicitta, whether it's equalizing self with others, or um, developing love, compassion, um, equanimity, those sorts of meditations, developing bodhicitta, all of those are going to help us with this attitude of really valuing others um, so that we can habitually, more habitually, more spontaneously consider their needs in relation to our own. One of the things that I, I really appreciate, have appreciated about Venerable's teachings since I met her in Seattle is that often I would go to the center in Seattle, Dharma Friendship Foundation, I would be in a crappy mood, and Venerable would get us to laugh at ourselves. So th this is a little bit hard to laugh at, but, um, you know, Stanley Steamroller, that's, <laughs> that's kind of funny when you think about it. So if I can have this image in my mind, and maybe it's helpful for you too, um, we can treat each other with more respect and consideration.